Hi, welcome to the Retirement Railroad, Night Day Modeling Tip of the Day. I'm Steve, and uh, uh, today I want to talk about piddling, <laughs> or piddling around. Uh, um, you know, I uh, uh, work basically by scene, and, and when I get uh, either to a stopping point, or I run out of uh, uh, materials, or... Uh, I just want to change. I'll, I'll go and work on something else. Right. And then there's times where I don't have all the materials. I'm done, primarily done with the scene or waiting for parts. Anyway, um, and I'll sit back and look at all right, what have I missed in certain areas? You know, uh, as I finished up an area or thought I'd finished up an area, uh, I may find something I don't particularly. Uh, uh, like or something that I didn't finish and uh, so therefore I'll, I'll uh, go back and fix it. All right? And that's what I call piddling around. So let's take a look at the drop down scene um, and hang tight and we'll switch cameras around. We'll uh, go there and take a look. Okay, so this is the uh, uh, drop down scene where the ice house is and the interlocking tower. I raise this up and lock it into place. Okay. I've got this area back here. And there is a gap, well this is a good inch, between the backdrop and the uh, uh, layout. Okay. And I've gone ahead started to piddle working on this and as you can see I've added in a piece of plywood that goes around this backdrop the drop down portion that still leaves me a gap back here so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take some of my uh, great stuff pro and use my phone pro which is this and I am going to fill that gap with some foam. And that will allow me um, some continuity between the tabletop and layout and the, and the backdrop itself. Okay. So hang tight. Uh, I've got to drop this down again. I've got to go around, open up the other side of the sliding glass door, and reach over and, and uh, foam it. Actually, we're going to go ahead and try it from here. Now that I've had this can of uh, foam, uh, what's nice about the Foam Pro uh, and the gun is it stores real well. So, let's start back here. Mind this is going to expand and I can always trim it out. That's all there is to that for now. If you're going to do any kind of uh, uh, foam work, I highly recommend going this route with the applicator and then use the, uh, the Great Stuff Pro series. You don't waste any. Okay. Like I said, this can I opened up two years ago. I actually bought two cans to start with, and I'm still using the first can. Alright, so again, I'll come back and I will trim that off. And then we'll continue the corn field scene uh, down in this direction eventually. All right. So that's one aspect of piddling around that uh, I'm talking about. 
and uh, you know all different kinds of things. It, it gives you a break uh, between scenes, so to speak, that you're working on or between projects, and uh, just the little stuff. Right. Next step in our uh, piddling uh, around segment is uh, this backdrop here. And a little bit over here. Uh, this is the drop down section here. And uh, as, you, as you can, uh, as I'll demonstrate, this section just simply uh, lowers down. All right, as a walkthrough. Okay. And uh, if I can get the device back. And, uh, you know, that was just a preliminary paint job uh, way back when. And uh, uh, just some cheap uh, greenhouse paint that I threw on there uh, as a uh, facsimile of uh, some landscape. So we're going to turn that into what I'm going to call uh, a Midwestern Monet. All right. Now, don't get me wrong, I'm not a artist by any means, and I'm just simply referring to an impressionist style uh, of uh, painting. All right, anybody that's uh, familiar with uh, the classical artist uh, Monet, a uh, French artist, uh, and he does some beautiful, well he was the founder of impressionist style of art, and uh, typically with his uh, pond scenes with the lily pads and so forth. So, when I say Midwestern Monet, you know, we don't, I'm not talking about ponds with lily pads, but more like this, all right? An impressionist cornfield. Now, in my farm scene, I have uh, a photo backdrop uh, of a uh, cornfield, and uh, it was great. Uh, but I thought over here, as a matter of fact, end of the uh, photo backdrop there but when you're down at track level it sits behind the uh, roundhouse so you really don't see it there now you do see it in the farm scene but you don't see it here okay. so uh, by Making it impressionist, as I uh, as I said, it adds a little flavor, so to speak, to it. Now the way I do that, and I'm going to show you in a second, is we've got the base, that bright green uh, color, over here, and I follow that up with a series of other colors. I start uh, with this. Uh, Arbor Green. Okay. Just cheap apple barrel paints. And what I do is I simply just start making a, a, a series of hash lines through there to simulate the stalks of, of corn. Okay. And then I follow up with some English Ivy Green. And the next thing I used was this crisp green. And as you notice, we're getting lighter and brighter as we're going. And then we go to the parakeet green. Okay. <clears throat> and then finally, after we've done all those, I used a... Um, oh, I think it's called marshmallow. Right? And you could also use a warm buff uh, for the tassels. Okay? This is a warm buff here. And the marshmallow works as well. Or both. Toasted. You can actually use both of these to mix it up some. 
Because that, the mixing of the colors, in my impression, gives you the depth of field. Uh, in my opinion, that's just what I'm doing here. And uh, then, after all that's done, I come across with some olive drab in the airbrush and put a misting of that overall to tone it down and uh, uh, dull it up a little bit. And if you noticed over here, I also used some very light blue uh, in the airbrush uh, above the corn stalks to simulate some dust clouds. harvest season or it could be a, a seed uh, farm and it could be detasseling, any number of different things, but the, that's what the, the uh, little dust bits look like. And again, you know, I'm not a prototypical modeler, I'm a proto-representative. If you can, if you look at that and you say, okay, I think that's a cornfield, I'm happy. If you look at it and you don't know what it is, well. Uh, it's my river. So anyway, this is the process I use. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to pull this backdrop off because I don't want to have to lean over or go on the other side and, and uh, work upside down. So we're going to take that off and uh, bring it over where I can uh, work on a little uh, bit easier. And with that, stay tuned and for the magic of editing, I'll be there in a jiffy. So after all that, it's time to plant some corn and give it some depth. All right. Uh, I used Blueford, I think it's called Blueford uh, Shops, cornfield in a box. And uh, what it is, it's a lo long strip, uh, when I say long, uh, seven, eight inches long, uh, of these plastic uh, corn stalks. Well, they are bright green. And so I came back and uh, brush painted uh, all of uh, these strips. And there's quite a number of them. Plus, I went back and added in uh, some uh, uh, caramel buff or toasted marshmallow, I don't recall which, uh, to simulate the, uh, the stalks. Okay? And uh, so that's what it looks like uh, in the top picture. And in the bottom picture, I went ahead and I planted the corn. And uh, depending on the distance uh, between the track and the backdrop, I would uh, add in one, two, three, four, five um, strips or depth of corn. And uh, it still has that, that uh, green base to it. So I take some sand, clay sand that I've sterilized by uh, putting in the oven for 200 degrees for an hour. And uh, uh, I use it uh, along with my ballasting uh, glue uh, to create the field uh, and the texture of the field. And I've mixed up some uh, paint. It's not uh, uh, straight black, uh, uh, but it's meant to sti uh, simulate the Midwest, the black Midwestern uh, soil, especially when it's uh, damp. All right, and it's blacker than what you can imagine if you're not from the area. And uh, so I've 
layered that in so it covers up the, that base of the cornfield. Okay? And uh, so that's what gives me the, uh, the depth of the uh, cornfield. And uh, I was so impressed with how these <laughs> backdrops turned out. Uh, my piddling uh, actually went a step further. So let's go ahead and uh, take a look at that next. So with my wind western uh, Monet completed, which would be along the left edge of this uh, uh, photo, um, you can see the tractor sitting there, and you can see a little bit of the uh, uh, Blueford Shops uh, corn. And uh, so this is what the rest of the drop down looked like after completing that. And uh, uh, the first piddling led to the second piddling, which is now leading to the third piddling. All right. Since I was uh, so happy with how uh, uh, the uh, backdrops had transformed, I said, well, we need to uh, work on this whole scene a little bit. So, out came the static grass applicator, and uh, we went ahead and added static grass, and you see a little bit of scatter up there on the plateau behind the interlocking tower and uh, so forth. I said, you know, it's starting to look pretty good. Right, so then what? Well, let's go ahead add some more vegetation to it. Okay. So uh, I added, made up a bunch of trees and uh, went ahead and planted those trees. And uh, you'll see uh, in the final uh, segment uh, uh, some other things I've added to the top of that plateau. So with that, stay tuned. So with that, I want to thank you for joining me here at the Retirement Railroad, matinee modeling tip of the day. And remember, it's always good to piddle around. I'm Steve, and y'all have a great day. Bye now.